Hey Algebra 2, today the lesson is called Simplifying Radicals with Indices Greater Than 2. Uh, the first question is, what does that mean? Well, um, we've been working with radicals that look like this, uh, the square root of 36. Um, we know that equals 6, okay? Well, there, just like in when I give you an expression like 3x, there's an invisible exponent here, invisible 1. Well, that's the same thing with this radical. Uh, there's an invisible number 2 there. Um, when there's no number there, there's an invisible number 2. And this is what we call our index. Okay, this is called the index. Well, we're going to be dealing with radicals that have indices that are greater than 2. So here we talk about square root because of a 2 there. Now, for our first example, instead of saying square root, now this says the fourth root fourth root, so again with the way we read this right here is what we say this is the fourth root. Again, that's because of uh, this four right here. So this is called the fourth root of 4a to the fourth. Now when you have an index of four on the outside and the same exponent on the inside, if I were to say the square root, okay, square root of six squared the squares cancel each other out, just like we do with x squared, square root of x squared, those cancel each other out, you're just left with x. Same thing here. Since we have an index of 4, fourth root, and a 4 on the inside, we can cancel out the 4 and the fourth root, so you're just left with 4a. Okay? So again, if you have the same power outside, or same power inside as the index on the outside of the root, or of the radical, sorry, therefore those will cancel out. Now, you might have another problem uh, set up differently, but it's the same type of problem. Here we have, on the inside of parentheses, we have a fourth root, but on the outside, we have a power of four. Now, these are just two different ways of writing the same thing. So the fourth root and the power of four cancel out to equal x minus one. This could have been uh, written to be x minus one to the fourth, to the fourth root, Again, that's just another way of writing it, so we can cancel those out. So we're just left with x minus 1. All right. Let's do another one. Now, this problem here, um, now we have a 2 up front. So we actually have a coefficient up front in front of the radical. So this power of 3 gets distributed to both the 2 and the cube root, or the third root. Okay. So first you have to do 2 to the third. 2 to the third times the third root of 2x minus 1 to the third power. So 3 goes to both. So in this case, you get 2 to the third. So that's 2, 4, 8. And then here again, the 2, or sorry, the, the third root and the power of 3 get canceled out, leaving you with just 2x minus 1. So really, we can go ahead and distribute that 8. So we end up with 16x minus 8 would be our answer. So again, if you have a number in front that's being multiplied by the radical, then the power on the outside gets distributed to both. Okay? So this is our first set of type of problems. So those are just working on canceling out and uh, with the same index as um, exponent on the outside. Now comes a little bit tougher of a problem. We have to simplify now. Simplify. Our first problem is the fifth root of negative 128. Now, when you have an odd index, you're allowed to have a negative underneath because a negative 2 times a negative 2 times a negative 2 equals negative 8. So I can say the third root, I can write this like this. The third root of negative 8 is negative 2. Okay? So we have to find the fifth root of negative 128. So what we have to do is find the factors, find a factor of 128 that is a perfect um, uh, number to the fifth power. So if you think about 1 to the fifth, we, we can never use 1. Let's try 2 to the fifth and 3 to the fifth. So 2 to the fifth is going to be 2, 4, 8, 16, 32, okay? 3 to the 5th is 3, 
9, 27, 81, 243. This is way too big. So this isn't going to work for this problem. So, but the 32 is a factor of 128. So we can say this is equal to, just like we did with the square roots about breaking up into factors, we can say this is negative 32 times 4. Okay? Now we have to ask ourselves what to the fifth power is negative 32. And like we said, we have the 2 there, but we're going to take the negative out also. So we have negative 2, leaving us with the fifth power of 4 on the inside. Now, we've been taught that we can break down 4 because the square root is 2, but that's when we're dealing with an index of 2. But in this case, we have a 5 there. So we can't really break down five any, 4 any more uh, from this point. Okay, so this would be your final answer. And again, I know some of these may be tough, but we will do many of them to get the hang of it. So now let's try the fourth root of 16. Well, let's try some fourth powers. 2 to the fourth is 2, 4, 8, 16. 3 to the fourth is 81. Now here, uh, 16 is a factor of 160, so we can break this up and say 16 times 10. So the fourth root, we can take the fourth root of 16. What to the fourth power is 16? The answer to that is 2. So when you take the 16 out, again, it doesn't become a 4. It's not squared. We're talking about what to the fourth power is 16, and the answer is 2, leaving us with a fourth root of 10 um, being multiplied. So 2 times a fourth root of 10. That would be our final answer. Again, we're looking for factors. In this case, that what to the fourth power is, is a factor of 160, and again, we found 16. Let's do one last one. So we have until we move on. We have 27 x to the 12th. Third root. Okay. So we need to think. Third root. 2 to the third power, 2, 4, 8. 3 to the third power, 3, 9, 27. Here, this actually um, works out perfectly because this is a perfect, perfect cube. That's what we call it to the third power. So when you take the 27 out, what to the third power is 27? Your answer would be 3. Now, variables. Okay, When we take that out, what we've been doing in the past is we've been saying um, if you have a square root, this becomes x to the fifth because there's that invisible index of 2 where you do the inside divided by the outside. 10 divided by 2 is 5. So we're going to do the same thing here um, with this problem. So we have x to the twelfth underneath the third root. So when you take it out, you do 12 divided by 3, which is 4. So it becomes 3x to the fourth. And that would be your final answer. Okay. So again... We're taking out the um, exponent by dividing it by the index. So let's do a little bit harder problem. Okay. All right. So we have 250a to the 11th, and we're going to talk about the third root. Okay. So again, 2 to the third is 8. 3 to the third is 27. 4 to the third, 4, 16, 64. And then 5 to the third is 125. 5 times 5 is 25, times 5 is 125. This is a factor of 250. So we can actually break this up to be 125 times 2. And now we have an exponent here that won't. Uh, be divided out evenly. So we want to break this down to be a multiple of 3. What's the biggest multiple of 3 that's less than 11? And that would be 9. So therefore we can rewrite 11 as a to the ninth times a to the second. Okay. Again, we want the biggest multiple of 3 that's less than 11. We're going to break it up just like we did with square roots. The square root of x to the seventh is x to the sixth times x because this is the largest uh, number that's a multiple of 2. Okay. 
So now we take out the 125. How do you break down 125? What is the th uh, what to the third power is 125? And that would be 5. We can take out a to the ninth. 9 divided by 3 is 3, which leaves you with the 2 and the a squared underneath. But never forget to put that index there. Okay? So you have 5 a to the third times the third root of 2a squared. And that would be your final answer. Okay? So again, what to the third power is 125? What to the third power is a to the ninth? We brought that out. Rewrite what's left. All right, well, let's uh, do a little adding and subtracting. So that was some multiplying. Now, if I were to give you 5 times the fourth root of 2, let's rewrite that, okay, plus 6 times the fourth root of 32 minus the fourth root of 162. <clears throat> Since these are plus and minuses, you can't combine them the way they are. They need to have the same fourth root, same number underneath the fourth root. So let's think of some numbers here. 2 to the fourth, 2, 4, 8, 16. 3 to the fourth would be 81. 4 to the fourth would be uh, 4, 16, 64. 256. Well, this is way too big, so we're not going to use number 4. So here, you can't break this down the way it is. It's just a 2. So you rewrite it. 5, 4, 32 plus 6. But you can break up 32 because we see that 16 is a factor of 32. 16 times 2. Okay? Minus 81 is a factor of 162. It's 81 times 2 equals 162. So now we have the fourth root of that. So now we have 5 times the fourth root of 2 plus when you take the fourth root of 16 you get the number 2 and you multiply it here. 2 times 6 is 12 times the fourth root of 2 minus fourth root of 81 is 3. The 3 uh, is to the fourth power is 81 and we're left with a fourth root of 2 underneath. So now we have all the same fourth roots. We have 5 plus 12 is 17. 17 minus 3 is 14. And you're left with fourth root of 2. Okay? Because now we can add them because we have the same radical. All right. So those take a, a few more steps, but um, definitely doable. And again, you can watch this video as many times as you need. So we have two more problems, and then we will be done. So let's do some multiplying of roots. So we have 3y to the third okay, times the fourth root of 6y times the fourth root of 9y squared. So my advice to you is to first multiply, since they all have the same uh, radical, same index, we can just go ahead and multiply underneath to get one fourth root. So we have 3 times 6, which is 18. 18 times 9, so you get 70, that's 9. 162. Okay, if you were to multiply 3 times 6 times 9, you get 162. You have y to the third, y to the first, y to the second, so that's 3, 4, 5, 6, so y to the sixth. And now we can start breaking down. Again, 2 to the 4th is 16. 3 to the 4th is 81. And we said that 81 is a factor of 162. So we have 81 times 2. And since we're dealing with 4th root, when it comes to the variables, what's the biggest multiple of 4 that's less than 6? And that would just be 4. So we have we can rewrite y to the sixth as y to the fourth times y to the second. So now the square root of eighty one it's not the square root, sorry, the fourth root of eighty one is three. You could take out y to the fourth, four divided by four is one, so just y to the first times the fourth root 
of here's the 2 and the y squared. All right? Again, these take these take some practice, but I know you all uh, can get the hang of this. Um, so again, multiply underneath, find the factor that to the fourth power, uh, find the number that to the fourth power is a factor of 162, in this case, uh, 3 to the fourth is 81, 81 is a factor, so you take the 81 out, it becomes a 3, we broke down the variable to have this exponent be the biggest multiple of 4, that's less than 6, that's 4, so we still have 2 there, 4 divided by 4 is 1, so we're just left with y to the first on the outside, and just rewrite the inside, okay? All right, final problem, and in my opinion, the toughest problem. So please pay attention. So we have 3 over 8a squared. We're talking about the fourth root. Well, we did problems like these with square roots, but now uh, these are a little more difficult because we're dealing with fourth root. First of all, we can rewrite this to be fourth root of 3 over the fourth root of a squared. My advice to you is rewrite any coefficients. If you could rewrite it as a power of something, like 8 is what some number to what power. Um, I know I can break down 8 to say that's 2 to the third power, 2, 4, 8. Okay? And we just rewrite the top. So we have 2 to the third a to the second and we need to simplify and rationalize this denominator so we need to get rid of this fourth root in order to get rid of the fourth root we need four powers of two and four powers of a so we can cancel out this fourth root so what we have to multiply this by is we need one more power of two and two more powers of a whatever you multiply the bottom you gotta multiply the top so now we have 3 times 2a squared is 6a squared, the fourth root of that. But notice down here we have 2 to the fourth. And here a squared times a squared is a to the fourth. And we have the fourth root on the outside. So now, remember what I said about the, the exponents and the root, how they, can, they cancel each other out if they're the same. So we can pull the 2 out front to be on the denominator and the a out front. Because again, the 4 powers of 4 and the 4th root cancel each other out. Which leaves us with still the 6a squared, 4th root 6a squared on top. We will do in plenty of these to get, um, get this practice down so we can do well. But that will be our last problem for this lesson. Again, break it up top and bottom. Find... Uh, a way to break down this coefficient to represent as a base to a certain exponent. So in this case, 8 is 2 to the third. And again, figure out how many more exponents of each do you need. We need to get to 4. We need one more exponent here for the 2 to get this to be 3 plus 1 is 4. We need two more exponents for the a. We multiply on top and bottom. And therefore multiply across on top. And then we break down the bottom by getting rid of the radical. So now there's no more root in the denominator, and that's that. So good luck with that, and I'm sure there will be plenty of questions um, at school, but um, please make sure that you ask those questions. All right, have a good night.